Here I have Arturia 61 Key Keylab MK2. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to connect this to your analog lab and your entire V collection inside of FL Studio. So the first thing that I wanna point out is to make sure that you're using the USB cable that came with your MK2. It doesn't necessarily have to be that exact USB cable. My point is not to use the MIDI ports to connect. Instead, you wanna connect via USB. That way, inside of FL Studio, when you go to your options, and MIDI settings, you'll actually see the Keylab MK2 and the MIDI in Keylab MK2 61 options inside of the MIDI input. Once you've done that, you wanna click on your Keylab MK2 61, leave that on generic controller and switch that port to zero. You do that by going down to here. On default, it'll say blank, switch that to zero or whatever number you'd want. Zero is just the first number, so that's what I'm gonna go with. And then make sure that that controller is enabled. Next, you wanna go down to the MIDI in two option, and you wanna go to the controller type right here and select Mackie Control Universal. This is gonna enable all of your transport controls on your key lab. Also over in options, make sure you have enable MIDI remote control selected. And now you should be able to play your keyboard with Analog Lab or any plugin inside of FL Studio. However, you'll notice that your controls still aren't working. So if you're trying to use any of the faders or knobs and sliders with your key lab, you'd be very disappointed. So from here, you actually have to go into this plug and cog icon and then drop down to the MIDI section and on the input port, set this to zero or whatever you had set the MIDI input port to right here in the MIDI section. So if you set this to 27, set that to 27 inside of the plugin as well. And now you'll see when I move the slider, the very first slider, it moves on Analog Lab as well. Same thing with all the knobs. And now I also have control over the presets as well. So on the MK2 to control Analog Lab, make sure you have Analog Lab selected right underneath the big middle knob in the middle of the keyboard. Select preset if you wanna browse through the preset, select categories if you wanna browse through the categories, and you just use your scroll wheel to move along. Press that in to select a preset. You can quickly layer by selecting part two on the keyboard and directly go to another preset. And now we have a layered sound. If you've previously owned Analog Lab or the V Collection, you'll also notice that these presets change a lot faster than before. It's basically instant. Before it would take a few seconds, on a good day it would take a couple seconds, but now it's instantaneous and this is coming from, and keep in mind, I'm doing this on an external hard drive. If you can imagine, it was actually slightly faster when I still had it on my main hard drive, but not a huge noticeable difference. My external is an SSD as well, but that is another update that Arturia did. They actually allow you to move all of your analog lab and your V collection instruments onto an external hard drive. That frees up quite a bit of space. I believe it was something like 20 gigabytes of information or more. So it's nice to have that on a separate hard drive and still have the speed to be able to change these presets instantly at will. One thing that I didn't mention in my Key Lab Essentials video, you'll notice that when you move to a new sound, say if I try to play this synth bass, it's still playing sounds from Analog Lab. So in order to combat that, you actually have to go back into your settings and turn that input port off. Now when I go back and play my synth bass, I'm not playing Analog Lab along with it. I will absolutely admit that's kind of a pain that you have to go back and change that input. I need to retest it again, but I'm pretty sure inside of Ableton, that's not an issue at all. It's only an FL Studio issue as far as I know. 
but I'm going to have a video where I break down the Keylab MK2 and its compatibility with Ableton along with the Keylab Essential as well. Now, when you get your Keylab MK2, it'll come with this MIDI control center from Arturia. Check out my Keylab Essentials video if you wanna see how I mapped my MIDI pads. I mapped them to the scale of E minor, which is the main key that I play in most of the time. That way, whenever I load up a sound here, I can actually play that sound in key with just my pads as well. Inside of DAW, make sure that the DAW map is set to default MCU. And you'll see inside of FL Studio when I press play, it works. When I press stop, it works. When I press record, that also works. Fast forward, rewind. You'll notice that the loop button actually turns on the snap settings on and off. So be careful with that. Under global controls, the save button actually works as save as. The punch in button turns on the metronome and turns it off if you click it again. The punch out button turns on the countdown to record. I have my countdown set to one bar, so I'll get a one bar metronome before I start recording. If you hit the metronome button, it'll start recording. If you hit the undo button, it'll go to the file menu. Under track controls, solo actually solos, mute will actually mute, the record button will record, and then read and write automation don't actually do anything besides flip to the channel rack for whatever reason. But I'd say for the most part, you're getting most of the controllability of the MK2 that you actually would need. Stay tuned for my next video. I'm going to show you guys how to map any MIDI controller to anything inside of FL Studio, whether that be controls for your DAW or even third party and stock plugins. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.